Every chain of wickedness, every chain of disease broken from people's lives tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. God, come and set us ablaze tonight. Come and set us on fire, Lord. God, we believe that you've called us 
to change a region, to change a nation. So Lord, have your way in this place tonight, in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And all the saints said, Amen, amen. and Amen. Glory. Please take a seat. Um, it truly is wonderful to see you all tonight. Uh, it really is. We, it, we love Jesus in this place. Uh, truly, we do. Uh, we, we meet here uh, on a Sunday uh, in this building which we rent. Uh, we meet 10.30, 6.30 every Sunday. So if you're living fairly locally, uh, this is the best church in the region. Did I just say that? I am totally and absolutely biased. Uh, listen, we love Jesus in this place. You may go to a great church. Please stay there. Uh, but if you haven't got somewhere to go on a Sunday and that you love the presence of God and you want to see God move in your life as an individual, this is a great church to come to. Amen. We got one amen. Uh, two, two, three. Did I, did I, I saw that hand. <laughs> uh, really, we love Jesus in this place. Uh, and tonight, uh, we're going to see the power and the presence of God move in this place on your life as an individual uh, in order for God to do everything that he designed for you at the beginning of time. Really, God knows exactly what you're going through. And he's already preordained your healing. Come on, a few amens. He, he's already set that apart. And, and what's going to happen tonight is when John and Julie come, they're going to unlock the presence and the power of God and it's going to touch your life in a significant way tonight. Come on, if you're here by faith, say amen. Please say amen. Listen, I, 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 I'm, trying to, I'm trying to position you tonight to receive your miracle. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to whip up anything emotionally. I'm positioning you tonight so that you can receive from God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. This is my pleasure uh, tonight to welcome John and Julie. Uh, these are an amazing couple. Uh, I've known John and Julie for a, a long time now, and I'm not going to go into the story of all of that because uh, I've probably said it umpteen times. Uh, but I really want you to... Welcome this couple tonight. They pray a phenomenal price for what they do. Uh, I mean, it, it all seems very nice traveling to nations and all of these different things, and it is, but there's a battle that they go through that you and I would receive our healing and miracle. So listen, let's honor this couple as they come to minister tonight, can we? Please come. Thanks, Pastor Drew. God bless you all. Okay, you can sit down now. Well, we are so excited to be here. You know the power of the Lord is present to heal. And this is a fact. There's people here tonight. You will not leave this place the same way you came in. You have an appointment with God to receive a miracle. There's an open heaven here. And the Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still does the impossible. He still does miracles. Miracles are normal for God. You know, you know, thank God for doctors, doctors, we, we love doctors, and thank God for modern medicine, but you know, there's a higher power than all that, that's a supernatural power of Jesus. I want to encourage you, we honour the medical system, the doctors, the hospitals, but we honour Jesus, because you know, you know, man can go just so far, that God goes far beyond, far beyond what we can ever ask or think continually. Hey, Julie. That's true. We're here for abundant life that was purchased for us on the cross. And we were after 100%. So every day when we're coming to these meetings, we're praying for 100% for everybody because that's what Jesus died for on the cross. He suffered so that those who believe in him don't have to suffer. So let's make the exchange tonight and leave our illnesses and our struggles and our depression at the foot of the cross and we'll receive 100% abundant life. Can I have a show of hands? Who is seeing John Minister for the first time this evening? Is there a lot of new people? Welcome. I'll just quickly go through how we'll minister so you can relax and know what to expect, but to reassure you that John and I and Pastor Drew and Pastor Jan and Pastor Graham and Pastor Vivian, we will pray for everyone who'd like prayer. And John will pray for everyone. And then if he feels, you know, you need more prayer in areas, the rest of the team will pray. So everyone will, if you're willing to wait, John will pray for everyone and then you'll get more prayer from the rest of the, the team. Um, to start with, though, John's going to share a word to get us focused on Jesus. And Jesus is our healer, not John. 
but there is a powerful gift on his life to see healing and miracles of every kind. So no matter how big or small or impossible or dire uh, a prognos prognosis might have been from the doctor, Jesus is above that and he specialises in doing the impossible. And, uh, you know, this is where he, he is at his best. We, you name any condition um, and we've seen Jesus heal it. Rare things, we've seen Jesus heal it. The um, medically impossible, Jesus, it's only a Jesus job. So he specialises in those. You're in a great place tonight with our collective faith. Two or more, three, more or three or more are gathered tonight in his name, believing now um, that he will answer our prayers. After John shared the word, he'll keep it short because, you know, people have got to go to work and so on tomorrow. He'll then go into a time of calling out people on words of knowledge or conditions he feels to pray for. First, he would have met a lot of you as you come, so he's aware of the needs. Probably pray amongst the people who are new to the meeting t tonight. Um, and then you will see Jesus heal people up the front here. And then at some point, probably around about an hour from now, John will pray over you in your seats and this morning in every meeting we see the Holy Spirit heal people in their seats without anyone laying hands on them at that point in what we call the general prayer or the um, uh, corporate prayer over you I'll actually go live on our John Mellon Ministries Facebook page so that people around the world who tune in can also benefit from that prayer so if you've got any friends or family who couldn't be here let them know and you can quickly text them when we're about to start roughly in about an hour we'll go live with that prayer uh, then John will say a prayer to invite anyone who hasn't yet opened their heart to Jesus to do so today and that also involves receiving um, you know the Holy Spirit into your life and then the promise of eternal life too um, when you open your heart to Jesus then after that there'll be a pause to take up a love offering for our ministry we are a faith ministry then after that the meeting will free up uh, so there'll be a little bit of a shuffling of the front seats and a prayer queue will form and then we'll um, stay back and pray until everyone who'd like prayer tonight has been prayed for it's going to be a powerful night of miracles for us thank you Jesus. hey thank you Julie Wow, we saw many people touched this morning. If you're here, God, people who came, severe oppression, I mean, really depression, depression stuff, and after prayer, stuff left them, and they and uh, they came up in a terrible state, and then just joy and laughter filled them. People healed from chronic pain, all sorts of conditions were healed. And then some people testify what happened last, what happened, we were here in June, and um and there's, a, and there's um, a Polish lady who came and her husband, they brought the little baby who, who, was, who was born with Down syndrome. Amazing miracle. And we prayed for her. And, and, and God, she had a phenomenal turnaround of Down syndrome since prayer that, you know, the child would not put on weight. Typical problems of uh, children have uh, aspects of, you know, physical aspects of Down syndrome. And the ch after prayer, the child began to grow at a phenomenal rate, amazingly. The child used to stick his tongue out. And after prayer, the child no longer sticks his tongue out. You know, the child don't 100%, but something is taking place. And, you, you know, these are, this is not normal for people with this syndrome. And um, amazing, amazing things took place. And, um, and a couple of back, people come from Ireland. People came this morning from Holland. They came, several people, who also is from Ireland here? Some people, several people came from Ireland. They came from Holland, they came from all over the place, uh, Man was it Manchester and Birmingham. Wow, mate, people came from everywhere, desperate for God. And the couple of back, the Irish people, you're saying that little boy who had the, um, who had the severe epileptic fits, he's improved dramatically, hasn't he? Little boy. Pardon? Yeah, well, the little boy came. The little boy came with them in June, the Irish couple at the back there, and they, another little boy had severe epilepsy, so bad it caused brain damage. And uh, having severe fits, well, since then, no more epilepsy, and doctors said there's no more epilepsy there. I said, that's a, that's a miracle, that's amazing, amazing. How God just touches people. You know, the Bible says we can lay hands on the sick. You know, next... Next few days, we've got meetings next weekend over in America, a place called Michigan, East Jordan. The last time we were there, very last time before the pandemic, three years ago, a little child was born with only half a spine, was, couldn't walk. Must be six or seven years of age, this boy. And had a, a tailbone, no tailbone, no half a spine was gone. Legs were just, flop, just, were just flopping everywhere. 
and they came in desperate, they heard about that we see many miracles there. I mean, creative miracles. And you can see this on YouTube. They brought the child and lay hands on the child. And the child began to walk first time in his life, running up and down. We've got a on video. The parents crying. They're just aghast. With, they're in shock. I mean, amazing. If you talk about creative miracles here, people with cancer, this is just people with cancer all through their bodies, only months to live, coming to the pain. Just lay your hands. They go back to the doctor. They're right back to us. All the cancer's gone. The doctors are confused. In fact, just before we came here, I was asked to do a women's conference. Can you imagine that? But anyway, <laughs> this lady came into the conference. I looked, oh, I know that lady. I recognize her. She came to the meeting about 20 months or two years before the meeting, and she had two months to live. And she had uh, she had cancer started in the bowel, moved to the liver, and then spread all through the body, like just everywhere for the whole body. And the cancer was it was just spread, metastasized cancer for the whole body, the bone marrow, everywhere. And she had one tumor st- that protruded out from the stomach. She had 36. Uh, rounds of chemo, imagine three, 36 rounds. You imagine, and the Sue was in a terrible state. She had severe chronic pain. She had neuropathy. You can see this on, the, on our YouTube site. She had um, hands and feet were totally numb. The, the, the 36 rounds of chemo wrecked her nerves. And I just laid hands on her in the name of Jesus. All of a sudden, the, you can see it on YouTube, the power p- floated through her. Jeezy filmed it. And all of a sudden, she said, the pain's gone. And as I was praying, the lump disappeared under my hand from her stomach. And then she said, I can feel my hands and my feet. And, and so I wonder what happened to her. She turned up the year before the previous woman's meeting. She shared a testimony. But then she was in the crowd. I called her out. And she says, almost two years ago, I was given two months to live. Doctors can't find any sign of cancer in my body. And it, was, it, it wasn't just a few... A few tumours, it was through the whole system. It was spread, metastasized everywhere. No pain. And she was so... You can see, go on YouTube, put on John Muller Cancer. She started off in the bowel. And uh, amazing mirror. See, I tell you what, we love doctors, but Jesus does the impossible. He heals epilepsy. He heals Down syndrome. He heals cancer. He heals depression and pain. There's no other name under heaven whereby we can be saved in the name of Jesus. And thank God for modern technology because we can talk about this. But you can go on YouTube and see these things happening. Join our Facebook. You put up a miracle every single day. You know, we, had a, we were at Bath. And a guy came in a wheelchair, Parkinson's. Hit. Only a few weeks ago, pain, shaking in a wheelchair. He was really depressed. His head was down. I walked up, I was praying for people, and I laid my hands and prayed for him. And because there's a lot of people there that night, a big church there, and I was praying for a lot of people. I turned around after about 15, 20 minutes, I turned around and noticed him standing up. And I walked up and says, hey, how are you going? He said, I feel normal. So I feel normal. I said, come here. You filmed it, didn't you, Julie? Yeah. Yeah, and we're walking along, how do you feel? So I feel normal. I said, well, run. The man ran, it's a large bar form of the big church. He ran from one side to the other, full of joy. And he walked out like this. No wheelchair. I want to tell you. And that only happened several weeks ago. You can see it on YouTube. I love the looks on their faces when they meet with, they have an encounter with Christ. The resurrected Christ. There's power in the name of Jesus. And if you have an incurable disease, doctors told you there's no hope, whether it's depression or physical, whatever it is, you're in a good place because Jesus took that on the cross. You're in a good place because we have a God who specializes in doing the impossible. And uh, I won't share for long tonight, but I want to just share some scripture here from 1 Corinthians you know, you know, the early church, there's quite a, quite a lot of infighting. You know, you know, humans and people in churches can infight, have their little divisions and problems. And we see 1 Corinthians, they, they had, um, Paul was, trying to, was talking to the 1 Corinthians and said, you know, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree that there be no divisions among you. You know, because they were, they were arguing about, you know, I'm a Paulus, I'm of Paul, and, you know, I got baptized by Cephas, I got... 
and they're arguing, all this infighting and division. Who knows? <clears throat> we can get sidetracked with things of church, everyday life, sidetracked with all sorts of problems. But God wants to bring us back to the real focus of life. And Paul speaking here to bring the people back. If that's your pacemaker, I'll pray for you straight away. That noise going on there. But, but, but Paul here is going to refocus people back to where the, our foundation is. Get away from all the human infighting and problems. Well, I belong to this church. This church did this and this did that and divisions and carrying on. And Paul wants to bring them all back. And verse 7, he said, For Christ did not send me to baptize. Not that it's a bad thing to baptize, but they were bragging. Well, he baptized me. No, he baptized me. Well, I belong to this. All the infighting and carrying on. And Paul said this. Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. The foundation, let's get back to the gospel. What's the gospel? It's good news. Good news. There's God in heaven. The Christ was nailed to the cross. He rose again from the dead. And Paul wants to bring them back to the foundation. That not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of his power or be made ineffective. You know, Paul had this amazing ability to want to bring people always back to the, our greatest foundation is the cross of Jesus. Because that's where our power is. Your, the power of, the, of a Christianity is in what Christ did on that cross. And then he said, for the, for, for the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who have been saved is the power of God. You know, the power to heal and deliver and to transform lives and to give sin is in the cross. In what, 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 see, for God so loved us that he came as a man. He, he allowed himself to be nailed to that cross, but he rose again from the dead and he is alive. And there's power. We're saying tonight, the power in the name of Jesus. Let's speak that name. Power in the name of Jesus. And Paul was saying this. It's the power of God in the cross of Jesus. And from verse 27, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even the things that are not to bring to nothing, things which are. You know, the world looks for the, the biggest and the strongest in the biggest army, the most intelligent, most powerful, the most whatever. But, you know, the kingdom of God is the opposite. Had the Son of God allowed himself to be humiliated and now to a Roman cross, the, with the greatest humiliation, one of the greatest tortures known to man is, is a crucifixion. And the, and the Son of Man allowed himself. You know, he didn't have to do that. He allowed himself. He could have called down the angels and wiped all the Romans out, but he allowed himself. Humility. God's chosen the, the crazy thing, the silly things. You know, you talk to people in the street, and if you tell them, well, you know, you know, I laid hands on somebody and they got in a wheelchair and ran around. They'd, they'd laugh at you if you stopped them on the street. Oh, I laid hands on an autistic child and then it began, began to improve, began to change. Symptoms began to leave the child. I laid hands on a child and, and you know, and, and, and after the fits stopped. They look at you and think, it's, you know, it's cra you're, man, you're, you're crazy. The world thinks we're crazy. We might as well act crazy. <laughs> might as well act crazy, do an Irish jig or something, I don't know. And I love the worship here, you know. Worshiping God. I don't care what people think. Let's worship Jesus. They already think we're crazy anyway, don't they, Drew? <laughs> Absolutely. And Paul said this. I love this in, in verse, in chapter 2 in 1 Corinthians. He said, And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony, uh, proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. You know, Paul never came with fancy words. You know, Paul was highly educated. He was one smart man. He was trained under the best. But, but Paul didn't want to exhibit himself. He wanted people to see Christ in him. And you know what happened to Paul when Paul got saved from Saul? The people don't often like this about Christianity. Paul spent 14 years in the desert. Sometimes when we come to God... God wants to bring us to a place where he can deal with certain things in our life. So we come to the place of humility, which we don't, no one likes that. But, but God, Paul was a, I tell you what, he was a really a great orator in his time. But Paul didn't want them to see that side of him. He was obsessed with people seeing Jesus. He said, I decided 
to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Man, man, let's get back to the basics here of Christianity. Let's get back to the basics. Stop fighting about, you know, I belong to that church. I did that. I'm doing that. Let's get back to where the power is. The cross of Jesus. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling in my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom. See, see, Paul's an orator. But Paul, I believe Paul was trembling because he really didn't want people to see how, what a great a man he was in himself. He really wanted them to say, man, I just want them to see Jesus. I don't want them to focus on me. Man, I, you know, my message is the cross. I want them to see Jesus. But... He said, not in my pull the words of wisdom, but my, my fancy preaching, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. I said, we need to see the demonstration. I'll just talk about it. The demonstration of the spirit and power of God. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power. Cast out demons, heal the sick, to see miracles. Power. Wonder working power. Transform lives. Break addiction. So your faith may not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He's trying to get them back to the basics here. The power of God. That the Son of Man would come and die for you and for me and give his life as a ransom. The most greatest love story in history, that God would love you and take all your sin, your weaknesses on that cross, exchange it for power and his love and his forgiveness and his healing. That is amazing. And so that's what God wants for us, really. He wants for us. The picture of the cross is foolish to those who are perishing, but to us who have been saved is a power of God. That's where the power lies. You know, when I pray for the sick, I cannot heal. But I know one who can. He lives in me. Amen. He's a king of kings. He's a lord of lords. And I won't preach for long because people have come. You need healing. You need a breakthrough in your life. And the good news is the Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that Paul preached is here tonight. 2,000 years later, he's here. What a wonderful Lord. He's risen from the dead. He's alive. Eternal life. The power of God. There's power in that blood of Jesus. Demons tremble with the blood of God. Jesus, at the job, blood of Jesus. There's power in that name to set people free. So God wants to get our focus out of the mundane things and the turmoils of everyday life we have in churches and home and work, you know, the turmoils that go on in our mind. He wants to bring our focus right back to the foundation. And God can touch you when you least. He can. He really can. He really can. <laughs> awesome God. And some people, you've come here, you need a miracle. You've come here, you need healing in your body. Who's here for the first time and you're suffering a lot of pain in your body? You need a miracle from Jesus. You need a miracle. What's wrong with you here this morning? What's wrong with you? Is it hurting now? Do you feel that? And what's up with you, mate? I've got severe arthritis in the hip and need to pray for you. Let's pray for you. Come and then we'll pray for the bloke there. Come here, the lady here. Who else is really suffering here tonight? You're in a miracle. You just come out here, that bloke up there at the back. I said, Hugh, is it? Come out here. Let's pray for you. Come out here. Floaters. And floaters. And sort of stuff in front of my eyes. So right now you're saying it feels tired and just... Yeah, just sort of, I've been had a migraine for... Had a migraine? But you just, maybe you just want to sit down here, Hugh. Yeah, and, and tinnitus, but it's this eye that just feels tight. Yes. Sorry, yeah. Well, just a what's your name? and blurry. What's your name? Claire. Claire. Can you pray for Claire? She's right now. Got set Claire free right now. Go at tightness in the head to go. No more migraines in the name of Jesus. He'll clear right now. Claire, excuse me. And set her free, Jesus, all that tightness to go yeah, my eye. from Claire, mm. all that tightness in her eye, that heal that tightness, no more migraines ever. 
In Jesus' name. How's your head feeling? Yes, okay. <laughs> Get it, Jesus. What are you feeling yeah. right now? I just feel warm. The heat? Yeah. And never, ever, never the same again for Claire. No more migraines. Tightness in her head. Is that tightness still there? Um, no, it's getting better. And the blurry and floaters in my eye. <laughs> yeah, they're getting in the way, aren't they? <laughs> God, never the same again for Claire. Never. 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 How's, that, how you, how's your head feeling now? Yeah, it's feeling a bit better. A bit how's it feeling better? Just feels, um, it feels like it's getting yeah, warm, sort of warm. A heat on it? Yeah. It's a power God for yeah. you. And God's going to keep touching you. Let's pray for this bloke over here. God bless you, mate. What's your name? Paul. Paul. Yeah. Paul, so you got arthritis in the hip. I have. So how did that happen? It just it just came from from wear and tear. It, it started just after Christmas, and it's got worse and worse. And the only time I get any relief is when I'm laying down. Wow, you got pain just down there. Then. Yeah. No, where where do you feel that pain? At, at, at the back and on the on the left side here. So can we pray for Paul? Can we reach out for Paul? Just relax, Paul. Just right now. Go heal Paul's hip right now. Set him free. Free. Brand new hip. In that joint. Stand back, please. Brand new hip in Paul's joint right now. Set him free right now. And go, he's coming against all the stress. He's been suffering from this condition. Now, out, 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 out. Up this hip now. Free. Free. Out. 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 Set him free. Brand new hip. Brand new hip in the name of Jesus. I command all pain to go right now out. God, replace the cartilage right now. A creative miracle for Paul now. The healing power flow in his left hip. Heal the damage, Jesus. All the pain in his back, his hip. And God, touch his mind right now. Free. Free. God, come against all the stress he's been under, all the suffering he's been through, Jesus. Set Paul free right now. In the name of Jesus, free. More. Point in God, you're healing virtue through Paul's, through his mind, through his left hip, his spine. Bring that left leg into alignment too from that, Right now, adjust that hip, all the pain to go, heal the damage, pour it out. Something's happening to Paul right now. The power of God is flowing for Paul. Never, ever the same again. Never the same again. Brand new hip, God even replaced the cartilage. Maybe a couple of you guys can help Paul up. Be gentle with Paul. Oh, gentle with Paul. Oh. Hey, Paul, excuse me. Let him, let him go, let him go, mate. That's something he's dead. Oh. Oh. Never the same again. Never, ever, ever in the name of Jesus. Never the same again. Let him go out, out, out. Echa fuera, suotele, suotele. Rompe esa maldición, suotele. Set him free, free. Yes. Now, never the same again, never. Deeper and deeper. Healing his emotions too, Jesus. Set Paul free. All pain is to go. The pain in his soul, 
his emotions and his body. Pour it out, Lord, free. In Jesus' name. Let's help pull up, blokes. Thanks, mate. Gentle with Paul. Oh, Paul. Help pull up, fellas. Hey, hey, Paul, what do you feel? Feel strange? Yeah. Just go for a walk, mate. Go for a walk, walk. Give a lot of hand, everybody. Hey, Paul, hold us up. Hold us up. Come give a lot of hand. Come on. Give a lot of hand. Come on. Well, what's happening to you, mate? What's happening, Paul? <laughs> I, I couldn't even get out of bed without pain. Well, walk up there. Faster, 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 faster. Back here, mate. Come on, run, run. Run, 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 run. Oh. Paul, you're running. I, you're I, running. I was, yes. Church, what did Paul say? Pastor Paul said, the demonstration of the power of God. That's what, that's what the world needs to see. The church needs to see. Stop your bickering and divisions. Get back to the power of the cross. Get back to Calvary. The church needs to be cast out demons and healing the sick. Preaching the gospel. Heaven and hell. We need, to get, we need to get back to the basics. Come on. Now, Paul, what did you feel doing for your body when I was praying? What did you feel? Oh, just relief, love, total submission I was. And I've been crying out for this miracle for so long. And now I've got it. Thank you, Jim. Now, 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 explain, explain. What did you feel go for you when I was praying? Uh, uh, sort of tingling, um, electricity, um, all sorts of mix-ups, really. But, wow, the... the the outcome is brilliant. It's Jesus. Come on, it's Jesus. <laughs> that song we sang, Jesus in the streets, Jesus everywhere. Come on, Britain needs Jesus. Come on, the world needs Christ. Let me shake your hand. Come on, there's power. In the name of Jesus Amen. to set the captives free. Amen. If you're a doctor or a nurse, you know that is medically impossible. Probably bone upon bone, severe pain. The only way he got relief was lying in bed. He couldn't even just get out and stand with an agony. I spoke to him before the meeting. He came, who knows this man? Who came with him? Come out here, this lady. Come out here. Is he your husband? He can do all the housework now. <laughs> no excuses. So what do you think about this? Oh, it's amazing. It's wonderful. It's going it's to touch so many people. So how long has it been since you, you've seen him run, run like that and move around? Oh, I can't remember. How many years? Oh, a couple of years at least. It's amazing. It's, it's come very quickly. It came on very quickly. So, so what did doctors say about this? Well, they said that medically he... He, his hip had gone completely, it disintegrated. And he Disintegr so so he, he basically used for a hip replacement, mate. Yeah, and it was about 80 years at least before he could get one. Yeah. He got a Holy Ghost hip replacement. <laughs> Come on. And, and you, you need prayer too, don't you? What do you need prayer for? Well, I had cancer about five years ago, um, and I have regular checkups. I um, believe the Lord healed me, but it would be just, just nice to, to be free of some of the things that are, you know. Do you have any pain discomfort anywhere in your body? You Sorry? Do you have any pain or discomfort anywhere? No, not really, no. What's your name? Sylvia. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Get Sylvia! Get Sylvia, Jesus! Yeah, she's laughing about something. You know what? The devil makes you sad, but Jesus makes you glad, glad, glad. Some people say happy. Happy doesn't rhyme with, with sad. See, this is a gospel. Well, Paul, Paul preached this. I want you to know nothing else but, the, but Christ had been crucified, the demonstration of the spirit and power of God. The world needs to see the demonstration of the power of God. Little, little disabled boys 
half a spine walking. People getting out of wheelchairs and running around Parkinson's. People, children with, with um, Down syndrome and, and um, or, autism, all sorts of things happening. Clear the deck. Swap, swap the deck. Yeah, swap the deck. So swap. What's happened to Sylvia? Help Sylvia up, fellas. The wife's relaxing as well. What's happened to Sylvia? She can't get up. She can't get up. I'm sure she. Sylvia, what's happened to you? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Sylvia. You know there is power when you pray in the name of Jesus. Power flows. Come on, the demonstration of power. See, the Bible says believers can lay hands on the sick. I believe what the Bible says. Can we help? What's his name again? Paul. Let's help Paul up. Oh, Paul. Paul, excuse me. Paul. Paul, 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 Paul. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Come over here, mate. <laughs> Come over here. Now, now, Paul, your wife's lying on the floor. Well, is, is she always lying on the floor of churches? She lies on the floor at home as well sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> After all the housework. Oh. Oh. Let's help Sylvia up. <laughs> Who knows? We can enjoy church, can't we? Get Sylvia! Okay, okay. Let's keep praying. Let's keep praying. Okay, let's pull, pull, pull. He doesn't want to go down again. He doesn't. Okay, help pull up, fellas. <laughs> You look happy, mate. I am happy. Now, yeah. but I want to ask you a question. Could all the painkillers take the pain away? Sorry? Could, could the painkillers take the pain away? No, not completely. But Jesus could. Well, I'll tell you something now, John. <laughs> 30 years ago, Jesus set me free from heroin addiction. Wow. 23 years. Wonderful. <laughs> and uh, that, that, was, that was a marvellous thing. Wow. And I'm, I'm so happy that I belong to him. Yeah. 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 Paul. I tell you what, we need more Jesus more than ever, don't we, today? Hey, Paul, God bless you. <laughs> Let's help Sylvia up. Help Sylvia up. Look at that. Now he's helping his wife. Look at that. Hey, Paul, give her a big hug, Paul. Oh. <laughs> Come on, this is the gospel. <laughs> Sylvia. <laughs> I don't warn you, he can run now. <laughs> yeah, be careful when you get home. But anyway, God bless you, Sylvia. <laughs> God bless you, Paul. No, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Shh. Okay, let's pray for you. Come on, you know there's an open heaven. Here. You know what I want to this morning I was teaching about how God can heal you in your seat without me touching you. You know, there's an, if we have faith, there's an open heaven. God can touch you. I tell you what, if you've come for faith, for believing, people got healed this morning. As I was praying for other people, God is healing them in their seats too. As I'm praying for other people, God can heal you. You say, Jesus, I want some of that anointing. I have some of that, Jesus. Hey, God bless you, Hugh. Now, Hugh, you want to explain? Everyone, we'll get everyone to pray for you too. Reach out towards you. Just exp explain what you need prayer for, Hugh. Um, I've got cancer in the tongue and the throat um, and tonsil and glands um, and I've had um, I've had all the chemotherapy and all the radiotherapy and um, I need a miracle. Wow. <laughs> and, and you're also on, you're on painkill so you can't feel pain. Well, I'm on morphine. Church, can we reach out to you? <laughs> come on church, you know, Hugh, Hugh has come here for a miracle. Do you, I believe in miracles. Do you believe in miracles? Yeah. Come on, let's reach out for Paul right now. Let's join our faith to give for Paul. Paul, when I pray, just relax. In the name of Jesus, I curse cancer right now. Curse cancer in Paul right now. 
Curse cancer in his jaw and his tongue, his throat. Curse cancer right now. I command every tumor to shrink and disappear. I command right now a miracle in the wonderful name of Jesus. God, release Paul right now. And God, touch his emotions. God, we release his mind. You have a last say, Jesus. You are a healer. You're Paul's healer and our healer, Jesus. We call upon you, Jesus, the power of your cross, the, the finished work of your cross and your blood, God, right now for Paul, for you. God, set he free, Jesus, right now. Set he free. A miracle for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, set you free now. Free. Free in Jesus' name. I command every tumor to shrink and disappear. Every cast is able to die. I break every curse right now. God, touch Hugh's mind, your peace that passes all understanding. I declare life in the wonderful name of Jesus. There's no other name under heaven where we'll be saved and set free but the wonderful name of Jesus. Set you free, Jesus, now, right now. Curse his tumors. Curse his tumors. Amen in Jesus' name. Let your healing virtue flow through Paul, um, you right now. More, more, more. Into his tongue, his throat, curses cancer, his glands. I command cancer to leave his body now. Break your power in the name of Jesus. The demonstration of the power of God. The demonstration of the power of Jesus. Poured in Jesus. Life for you. Life. Life. Putting God into his emotions, God. Peace for his mind. Peace. God, we pray for a deep, peaceful sleep for you tonight. To sleep like a baby. Peace. 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 In the wonderful name of Jesus, peace. I declare never, ever the same again. Never the same again. Pour it in, Lord. Free. 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 How's it going, Hugh? Can you feel God touching you at all? I feel the presence of God. But this is all very numb, so it's not really fair anything. Um, I can't really move my tongue. I need to be able to move. Jesus, right now, for numbers to go, the tumor is to shrink in his tongue. Life. 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 Curse this cancer. Curse these tumors. Go. Let your healing power just flow through you right now. I declare life. Through his voice. His throat, his tongue, everywhere, God, life. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Deeper and deeper. Often after we pray, the healing power just continues. If you want to, I'm going to believe the healing power will just keep flowing through you. Amen. Amen. I'll it. Saturate him, Jesus. Saturate him. Even while he sits in his seat. Let you invert you keep flowing. Sometimes when you pray, God begins the healing and it continues long after you stop praying. How's it feeling now, mate? Yeah, I'm, I feel very peaceful. I'm a, I don't have any fear. I, I feel very peaceful. I sense his presence. That's, that's power. That's, that's important, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And we thank you, God, even more. 
You know, when some of the doctors give you a diagnosis like that, you need peace, don't you? It's more than just the body, it's also the mind. So deep peace will sleep for you tonight. We thank you, God, your power will keep flowing for you. And declare a reversal. That tumors will shrink and begin to disappear. His throat, his tongue, everywhere, God, his jaw. And you're hearing virtue keep flowing through you. You sit down. I'm going to pray for you later too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I believe, I believe the power of God is going to keep flowing through you, Hugh. Yeah. You often see that. Yeah. You know, when I pray for the guy at Parkinson, when I pray for him, there's no change when I prayed for him. He just sat there, didn't feel anything. Two minutes later, he stood up. And sometimes that's how it is. The power of God keeps flowing and flowing. All of a sudden, something begins to happen. The Bible says sometimes they get healed as they went. God heals in many different many different ways. And God, we thank you for your anointing that's continue, continuing to flow through you. And we'll come back to you, Hugh. Bless you, mate. Let's keep praying. Who else has come here? Even the, and I've never prayed for you, and you're really suffering right now. You need a miracle. You're really suffering right now. Now, you know, some people pray for this morning. It wasn't physical pain, but it's emotional pain. Maybe you had a miracle in your mind. You got turmoil or depression in your mind. You need a, you need a breakthrough. We had several people this morning, mate, I think they just left them. Bang, they just left them. Come here, mate. And you're from where, Stuart? Crawley. Huh? Originally Yorkshire. Crawley Yorkshire. Now. Yes. Good on you, mate. Now, Stuart, what do you need prayer for, mate? Uh, depression. I've been suffering quite badly for a year. Okay. And you come all the way down from there to the... No, no, I live in Crawley now. Crawley. Near Gatwick. And near Gatwick. Can we pray for Stuart? Everyone can reach out for depression. Let's reach out. Jesus. God, set Stuart free right now. I break depression right now. Release his mind. Free. Right now. I declare your peace, God. That passes all understanding to touch Stuart right now. Pour it in, Jesus. Life. 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 Peace, Jesus. For Stuart, peace. Pour it in, God. Peace for Stuart. Deliver him, God. Free, free, free. How's that feeling, mate? <laughs> so, How's it going, mate? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> get in Jesus get Stewie get Stuart how's it going mate oh yeah peace you got touching you yeah definitely definitely wow <laughs> God I break depression God I heal the root causes right now God, I heal the root cause of it right now. In Jesus' name. Peace. Never the same again. How's it going, Stuart? Uh, I can feel the Holy Spirit moving, touching me, tingling. So, so how's your mind going? I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> you look happy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> Obviously, God's doing... God's joy there, touching me. God's doing yeah. something to Stuart. We thank you, Lord. 
See, God wants to heal us emotionally as well. God wants to heal emotional pain as well as physical pain. And Lord, we thank you for your power. Let it continue to flow through Stuart Jesus. More saturated, God. Saturated. Hey, bless you, mate. Sorry? Bless you, bless you, mate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm in another world. <laughs> he sounds like a Yorkshireman, doesn't he? He sounds like he's from Yorkshire, don't you? Uh, oh, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Now, get Stuart. <sighs> Pour it in, Jesus. Get Stuart, Jesus. Get Stuart, Jesus. Hey, good morning, mate. Oh, thank you. Oh, bless you. Well, I'll shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, mate. Good on you, mate. <laughs> and who's this lady here, Stuart? Are you his wife? Have you need prayer for anything? Is it painful at all? We'll pray for you. And who's this lady here? You need prayer for anything? Not anything specific, but just for God's presence. Just come, just just pray for this lady too. We pray for everybody here. Hey, what's your name? I'm Carol. Jesus, touch Carol right now, Lord. Thank you for Carol. You know what she needs, God. Holy Spirit, touch Carol right now. Touch Carol right now, Jesus. Set her free, Jesus, deep on the inside. Heal her emotions right now. Free. Set Carol free in the name of Jesus. Free. Set her free, Jesus. Release Carol. Release her mind. God, we declare your peace that passes all understanding for Carol, Jesus. So here, you've got a lot of discomfort in your abdomen right now. Man, you need a miracle. Where are you? You need healing right here in your abdomen. Where are you? God wants to heal that right now. Put your hand up. Who's got that? Excuse me. <laughs> Get that woman. Now help, help this lady out. Help this lady out. Oh. Did you feel God touch you? Yes. <laughs> try, try, try to explain what it, what it feel like. Just a piece. <laughs> just a piece. People just need a piece of God, but so... I don't make any fuss. I'm just drawing you off. There you are. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, who's got the... Somebody's got you... Man, you did a miracle in your abdomen. Where are you? God wants to heal that. Just come. What is that? Some people get a bit shy. They say, well, I don't want to get this strange, strange man. He might do something strange to me. Well, let's help this lady out. What's happening to her? her? <laughs> hey, God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> if you try to explain what you, what did you feel. Yeah, just a, yeah, freedom and a, a peace. It's wonderful, isn't it? Hey, God bless you. Thank you. And you, ca you came with, with Stuart. Stuart. Yeah. God bless from from Crawley. From Crawley. <gasps> Crawley. Downtown Crawley. <laughs> Crawley. It's, it's got a nice ring to it, Crawley. I think of insects or things, or spiders, but Crawley. <laughs> Crawley. But you've got the stomach. You've got some issue in your stomach here. Is that you, mate? Yeah. Come here, mate. What's your name? Matthew, good on you, Matthew. I like your little badge there. Thank you. Now, 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 now what do you need prayer for in your tummy? Um, well, I've had this sort of, it feels like a pressing from the inside. Something that happened to me when I was a uh, teenage years was not very nice. And I thought it was like psychosomatic. And it sort of like, it was all right. And then, uh, strangely enough, like a couple of days ago, I felt it. And so I thought I might as well come up and... And where, where do you feel it? Just there. Do you feel it now? Uh, not really. Not really. It's one of those Comes and goes? Like, yeah. God, I pray that it'll never come back. I command it's never to come back in the name of Jesus. And bless this man, touch him, God. And set, set him free right now in Jesus' name. It's 
set him free. But there's a lady here, it's like in this region, the region of your abdomen, you need healing. Like down this region here. Where are you? The lady here, you need healing that area of your body. You need to come here now, God wants to heal you of that. And someone else here, you have a problem with your, a lot of pain in your shoulders, and you're, maybe you lift your arms, you really feel it. You're in the miracle in your shoulders, and you raise your arm. Man, you feel it. Where are you? You're in the miracle. That you, mate. Yeah. Oh. I'm not the best way. And so, and so what happened to your shoulders? I think it's from playing um, badminton. I used to play against my mate, and he was incredibly tactical, and he'd whack it all over the court, and I'd just be running around, like, walloping it. And, uh, uh, yeah. He's got a badminton shoulder. Yeah. And is this one here? Yeah. Is it painful now? It's not at the moment, but it's... Is it sore when it goes up? Um, it's, again, it's one of those things that's slightly painful, but the is pain comes... Is it sore when you play badminton? Oh, well, I don't play anymore. <gasps> <laughs> God, he needs to be released to play badminton, doesn't he? He's got badminton shoulder. You've got a tennis elbow? This is a badminton shoulder. God, he'll have a badminton shoulder. In Jesus' name. And never and bless this man, God. Touch his emotions. Every area of his being right now. Free. 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 You can go go to, go and play some Batman. Test it out. <laughs> right. Okay, no worries. Thank Let you. us know how you're going. Okay. Thank you. You're a good sport. What's your name? Matthew. Good on you, Matthew. Thank good you. Good on you. Good sport. Give him a hand, everybody. Good sport. <laughs> but, but you know what? I'm going to just pray, pray over you all right now because there's, there's an open heaven here right now, you know, and God knows what you need. We keep calling people out one by one, but, but you know, this morning I was praying over people. I said, put your hand. We need a miracle. And God was, was touching people in a powerful way. So, even right now, as an act of faith, I'm going to pray over you. You know, there's no distance in prayer. Some people have got conditions they might be embarrassed about or they don't like being in front of people, so they mightn't respond to when I call people. But, you know, God can touch you right in your seat right now. And, um, and right, now, right now, as I pray, as an act of faith, put your hand on the part of your body. We you need a miracle, you might have a stomach problems or shoulder problems or depression or, you know, a tumor or, or, or lump somewhere. So you put your hand in a miracle. It's an act of faith. I'm going to pray right now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, right now, you know every need in this room right now. And I take authority. I bind and I break the works of the devil. I decree healing right now. We thank you, Lord, for the finished work of the cross. I decree healing right now. I command pain in the bodies. I command stiffness to go. God, release necks and shoulders and spines and tailbones. God, heal knees and ankles and hips right now. I declare healing Arthritis, go in Jesus' name. I break rheumatoid arthritis. I break osteoarthritis. Fibromyalgia, go in Jesus' name. Inflammation in joints, go in the name of Jesus. Heal lungs right now. Every lung disease right now. Lung cancer right now. Every tumor dissolve and disappear. Emphysema right now. Asthma right now. Every breathing problem. Every lung disease be healed now in the name of of Jesus. God, heal. Heartburn right now. Reflux right now. Command all that, all that um, burning and that discomfort to leave the esophagus right now in the name of Jesus. All discomfort go. All abdominal pain to leave right now now. God heal ovaries right now. God assist on ovaries to dissolve in Jesus' name. God heal prostates right now. Swollen prostates, prostate cancer. I command healing in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Let prolapses be healed right now. God, a miracle right now. Let your healing power flow through every single person. Set them free. God heal minds right now. Break fear and anxiety. I break sleeplessness right now, sleep apnea right now, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, release minds right now in Jesus' name. Asperger's, ADHD right now. God, heal minds right now. I declare your peace that passes 
all understanding, release minds right now in the name of Jesus. Heal eyes right now, blurred vision right now, detached retina right now, macular degeneration right now, glaucoma right now, short sighted, long sightedness, heal eyesight, heal vision right now, be healed in Jesus' name, sore eyes, itchy eyes right now. Every eyesight problem be healed now in the name of Jesus. God, I rebuke tenderness right now. I command ring of the ears and tenderness to be healed. Ear infections to be healed right now. Set them free in the inner ear right now. No more infections. No more deafness. No more ring of the ears right now. God, heal ears right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. God, deafness go right now. Set them free. Heal jaws right now. Clicking jaws. TMJ. Jaw problems right now. Dental problems right now. Toothaches and gum disease right now. A miracle in teeth, I command toothaches to be healed. In the name of Jesus, God, heal teeth right now. Inflammation of gums be healed right now in Jesus' name. Heal throats right now. I rebuke cancer right now, but I break cancer right now. Every tumor dissolve and disappear. I break cancer. Cancer of the lungs, cancer of the... Um, of the liver right now, the kidneys, of the prostate, breast cancer right now, brain cancer, brain tumors right now, blood cancer, leukemia. I break cancer in Jesus' name. Be healed now. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power that's flowing through bodies and setting people free. In the name of Jesus, heal tennis elbow, tendonitis in the elbows, and tendonitis in wrists, and, uh, and, and every joint to be released right now. Inflammation, inflammation. To go right now, paralysis, God, brain injury right now, paralysis right now, stroke injuries right now, weakness right now, be healed in Jesus' name. God, let your healing power just flow through people right now and set them free. I declare healing in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, just come and touch every single person, release them right now. Healing right now, God, deliver them right now. We thank you, Lord. Just come, touch Every single person here right now, God, you know they need heal skin right now, whether it's eczema right now, whether it's rashes or every skin disease to be healed in the name of Jesus. Heal heart conditions right now, heart palpitations, heart fibrillation right now, heart disease be healed in Jesus' name, lung disease be healed now, emphysema right now, and asthma, breathing conditions right now. Every condition be healed in the name of Jesus. Heal pancreases right now. Every organ be whole and healed in Jesus' name. Got a miracle right now for knees. So on here, man, you didn't put your hand up. You got a lot of problems with your knees, especially your left one. When you get up and down the chair, a lot of pain. Got a command it to be healed. Got to heal ankles right now. And broke veins and swelling in the ankles and the legs. Be healed in Jesus' name. Plantar fasciitis. So on here, you got a Get a lot of pain in your feet. I command healing in Jesus' name. No more plantar fasciitis. Let the, let the inflammation, the pain, the tendons of the feet right now. Total healing in the name of Jesus. Set them free. Somebody here, you got a lot of a problem in your scalp, a lot of itching, a really annoying. I command it to be healed. Right now in the scalp, I command it to be healed in Jesus' name. No more irritation in the scalp right now. In the name of Jesus, I command no more um, abnormal hair loss in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, for touching every single person here right now. God, heal sinuses right now. No more uh, block sinuses, Lord. We come against running allergies, pollen allergies and food allergies and God, gluten allergies, all allergies. I break in Jesus' name. God, release right now from all allergies of every form. Be healed. I come against numbness right now and paralysis. Let your healing power flow through the parts of the body that are numb or paralyzed. I declare healing. God heals spines right now, painful spines, painful um, um, tailbones right now, and shoulders and necks be released now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Touch every person in your wonderful name. Just start to thank you now for touching you. Thank you, God, for touching us. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power that's flowing through us. We receive it. We thank you, God, for setting us free. We receive it right now. In your wonderful name, Jesus, amen. 
Now, it's interesting. We often see people, some people this morning declared that they had healing as I was praying for other people. As I was praying for others, God was healing them. I said there's an, there's an atmosphere for miracles in this place. And, um, and um, if you sense a symptom lead you, if you sense God heal you in some way, even before I prayed the prayer or during the prayer, put your hand up. If you sense God touch you, we were just praying just then or even just before when I was praying for other people. Anybody here, put your hand up. Anybody here, you sense God touch you. Check yourself out. Check yourself out. Some people don't know if they're healed until you do something you couldn't do before. Check yourself out. If you had a painful knee, put pressure on them. If you couldn't raise your arm, raise your arm. If you had a lump, try and find that lump. Some people don't even check themselves out and they realize later they're healed. Things disappear. It's amazing. Where are you? Anybody here? Put your hand up. God's touched you. Something's left you. Has God touched you? You want to come out here and share? This lady here. Hey, God bless you. How do you feel God touched you? Um, it's not fully gone yet, but I did have a really bad headache and all across my eye. Like I've had it all night. I mean, yeah, since I've even before I even came in here. And how's it now? I've gone down to about two. <gasps> Let the two go, Jesus. Let the two go. Let the last bit go right now. How's it feeling now? Lighter. Is it gone? Almost. <gasps> Almost. The last bit go in Jesus' name. The last bit go in the name of Jesus. How's it feeling now? A lot better. A lot better? Yep. Is it gone now yet? Um, I'm feeling a lot lighter. It's still slightly around the eye and the... Back in my head, but just slightly. It was, yeah. How bad was it before? Um, about eight out of ten. <gasps> and never the same again. Never, never the same again. Never, never. What is that? It just feels tingling now. Just tingling now. Yeah. yeah. You get a tingling head. Yeah. Hey, God bless you. Is the pain gone? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, God bless you, tingling head. <laughs> you know, quite often people tell us, you know, um, after you prayed, something left me, but I didn't want to testify because I was a little bit embarrassed or maybe I wanted to go and check it out first. It was real. But God does often does a lot more than what you see. I was telling Drew that the other day. We often, often we go back to churches and they say, I got healed in that meeting, I got healed in that meeting. And I said, how did God heal you? Well, I was sitting in the meeting, God healed me. And, and the person didn't find out until later. Sometimes you don't know the next morning or during the week you realize something's left you. God heals in many different ways. Anyone else want to testify? God's touched you? Come out here, mate. Good on you, mate. What's your name? Al. Al, how did God touch you, mate? Um, I've got, I can't pronounce it, planet arthritis. Yeah. So... It, it's interesting, I got it from sport, but when I'm in worship, sometimes it comes on and it manifests itself even greater. Wow. So I felt there's movement in the feet. I think it's now gone, but not fully sure. Can you feel it? It's like that other guy, it's intermittent. I'm fortunate I don't get it all the time, but if I run on it, it's, it's in pain. So which, which feet is it? Both feet. Which feet is it? It's bad English. Both feet. Bad English, both foots. <laughs> It's in both foots. Jesus, heal the tootsies. Heal the tootsies, Jesus. No more plantar fasciitis. Yeah, amen. He can play badminton with the bloke at the back and have no problems. Or he can go jogging with this man over here. <laughs> Just check it out. Go for a bit of a run, mate. We'll come back. Let's pray again. Let's pray again. Let's pray again. It's both feet. Yeah, both feet. Let's pray. What's your name? Al. Let's pray for Al. Lord, we pray right now you'll heal Al's feet. No more plantar fasciitis. 
No more Guy Hill Lafitte, no more pain, yeah. no more plantar fasciitis right now. Heal that right now. All pain, inflammation, go in the name of Jesus from Al's feet now. <sighs> Set him free, God. Do something now. What do you need to do now? No, it's still there. Still there? It hasn't, no, it hasn't changed. Jesus, we just pray that will go, God, by the end of the meeting. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it'll never come back. Amen. 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 Let it go. Save this off me, Adelaide. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your healing power. For your healing power. The flow into my feet. Go into my feet. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. Just run on it now. <laughs> Marginally. Marginally. Yeah. <laughs> Marginally. You know, I believe God will keep touching you. Yeah. He really will. Just go back to your feet now. now. I believe God will keep touching Al. Yeah. He'll keep touching him. Because I've learned over the years, God heals different ways. Some, not every miracle is instant. Sometimes people sit down for a while. We had a lady today, I, she, had brought up, she had an injury many years ago, a very painful knee. And after prayer, it wasn't 100%. And then we're walking out, she stopped and said, John, it's all gone. It's been clicking since I was more than 20 years, decades, clicking in pain. She wasn't totally healed. It improved a bit. But by the time she left here, totally pain free. I just need to fix your hair. Because you look like you've just been patched from a nail. There we go. So, anyway, so what happened? She wasn't totally healed, but by the end of the meeting, it was all gone. And that happens a lot. I want to encourage you God heals in many different ways. Some people feel nothing, and next morning they wake up totally healed. Or, or, or over, the, over the week, it improves every single day till the end of the week is totally gone. God heals in many different ways. This morning I talked about the healing ways of God and how God heals. You know, even Jesus didn't see everyone healed. Do you know that Jesus didn't, didn't see everyone healed? Did you know that? He prayed, he prayed for a blind man. He wasn't healed. We had to pray for him twice. Jesus went back to his hometown. The Bible says that, 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 that he couldn't do any miracles, only a few, heal a few people. He had he could do anything at all because of their unbelief. Even Jesus. And that's Jesus. And so you got to understand God heals in many different ways. You know, sometimes Jesus said, um, the Bible says that they were healed as they went, as they left. Jesus prayed for them. As they, as they left on their way, they got healed. We don't know the length of time. Sometimes the length of time to the healing manifests itself. And I've learned this over the years many times. So I want to encourage you, those who pray for the sick, it's always good to see instant miracles, but sometimes there's a process with healing. And we've got to, but I keep encouraging people, if you get prayer, keep say, thank you, God, you're healing power's flowing from me. Thank you, God, I receive that. Because what happens if you think everything's going to be instant and it doesn't happen instantly, the devil says, you, look, uh -huh, you weren't healed, nothing's going to happen. But I want to encourage you, get a hold of the word of God. Thank you, God, your healing power is flowing through me. You know, I, I've said that so many times. I want to really want to encourage you. Encourage you. God heals in many ways. God is at work in our lives. Now, I'm going to pray a very simple prayer right now. It's a prayer to receive Jesus because I, I presume most of you would know Jesus. But maybe there's someone here, you've never opened your heart to Christ. The most important thing is know Jesus to have a personal relationship with him. That's the most wonderful thing. And that's why Jesus came to reconcile lost humanity with God, the Father of God. And so Jesus came to bring us into one with God. He came to give his life for us. And the, and the Bible says that experience that we can have called born again, where, where we open our hearts and Christ comes in our lives and there's a new birth that happens. He gives us his spirit. And we have had a beautiful relationship. I've had an intimate relationship with him. It's a wonderful thing. And some people know about church. They know about God, know about God, but they don't, they don't know God. There's many people who, who, who knew the queen, but they didn't know the queen. They knew her because she's the queen, but, but they'd never met her. But those in the palace of a the family, they knew her. 
So people say, people know about Jesus. Oh, yes, I know. I believe, I, believe God, I believe in God. I know about Jesus. But they've never really had an encounter with Jesus. But the Bible says that we, as human beings, can have the supernatural encounter and relationship with a living God. So right now, I'm going to pray a very simple prayer. I do this every meeting. I take nothing for granted. And I've, I've known people who've been in these meetings like this. And, um, and I've said this, a simple prayer. And their lives have been totally transformed from that day. God, wants, God loves you very much. He wants to know you on an intimate level. So I'm going to pray a simple prayer because the, Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, the door of your heart. And it's like a door of your heart. And he, he says, Will you let me into your life? Let, you know, we can often keep God out of our life. But the Lord says, Open the door of your heart. Open your heart to him. Let him come. Just let him come. Receive him. And so I'm going to pray a simple prayer. I'm going to invite you to say this prayer with me. And, um, and it's maybe those of you who haven't said that prayer, we can say it together. So I'm going to invite you just to say, I'm going to invite you to repeat this prayer right now. As you pray this, the Lord will come to you. And maybe, maybe you've known God, but you've wandered away. And you've walked away from God. You've become dry in your faith. It's a time to come for a fresh encounter with Jesus tonight. Let's bow our heads. I invite you just to repeat this simple prayer after me. Let's say this right now out aloud. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you tonight. Please come into my life. Forgive me for my sins. I thank you, Lord, you died on the cross for me. And you rose again from the dead. I declare that you are Lord. I thank you that you love me with an everlasting love. And you've promised that you'll never leave me or forsake me. Thank you, Jesus. I receive you now. Amen. You know, there's many ways you can say that prayer. Very simple. It's really just coming to Jesus. Say, Jesus, here I am. And I want to encourage you. If you said that prayer, who said that prayer for the first time or get your life right with God? Just put your hand up. Anyway, like that. So the prayer for the first time will get your life right with God. Anyone like that? You know, I take nothing for granted. But I want to encourage you. If you said that prayer, the Lord has heard you. I also want to encourage you, if you live not far away, if you're after a good church, this is a great church where they, where they pray for the sick and they preach the gospel. I want to encourage you. In that walk of God, you know, if you're at a Bible, begin to read the word of God. Begin to pray. Pray just talking to God. Very simple. Walk, make it your mind. Today, I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to live for God. And maybe you feel God calling you to pray for the sick. Say, so today I'm going to start to begin to reach out and pray for the sick. Because, you know, God has called more than just pastors or me or my wife or evangelists. He's called believers. Believers can, you as a believer can lay hands on the sick and see them healed. You really can. And so, and once again, I really want to thank Drew and Jan for having us. Thanks for having us and the great team. Give them a hand, everybody. And what's going to happen? What's going to happen is I'm going to keep me and the team are going to keep praying for every single person here. But first, I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Drew. Thanks, Drew. Thank you. Thank you, uh, John. Thank you very much. Hey, who's been blessed this evening? Yeah, really. I mean, I have been blessed just listening to the Word of God being preached and experiencing His presence and power in this place. As we've been blessed, I want to give you an opportunity now. Uh, to release something that you uh, might have uh, to John. So I'm going to ask Graham to come now. Um, so just, I want you to prepare your heart uh, for, to sow this evening uh, in a place that it will be a real blessing for John and Julie. Amen. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's, it's a, real, uh, a real pleasure to be taking up this offering this evening for John and, and Julie, you know, and as we, as we sow into their ministry, we actually have a wonderful opportunity to partner with them in everything that they're doing around the world, yeah, to, 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 to partner with them in their ongoing ministry moving forward. You know, we've seen some wonderful miracles this morning and this evening, and these are things that are very, very precious. Yeah, there are things that we need to treasure in our heart. There, there are things that we need to sow into 
in expectation that God is going to do more and more of this, yeah, throughout the UK, you know, throughout the world. And so what we're sowing into, I believe, is that expectation of the increase of signs and wonders and miracles and people just being set free to be the people who they were meant to be. You know, whenever we see healings and miracles, it's God manifesting his actual presence in our midst. It's the kingdom coming to earth. There is no sickness in heaven. And God's will is that there be no sickness here on earth. So these, as I say, are wonderful things, precious things to treasure in our heart. And so we have this opportunity to respond this evening to the things that our eyes have seen. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us, it, it tells us this, it says, for your heart will always pursue whatever you esteem as your treasure. Yeah, let's treasure what we've seen. Jesus said, don't keep hoarding for yourselves earthly treasures that be, can be stolen by thieves. Material wealth eventually rusts. It decays. It loses its value. We're seeing that in the world all around us, especially in the last week, aren't we? Yeah, but he says this. He says, instead, stockpile heavenly treasures. How do we do that? We sow into heavenly treasures. We sow into the kingdom coming to earth. Amen. Stockpile heavenly treasures for yourselves that cannot be stolen. They'll never rust, decay, or lose their value. In fact, as we sow into God's kingdom, we'll see an increase. There'll be a multiplication. Yeah, a 10, 50, 100-fold multiplication. So this evening, let's sow with that expectation of a great multiplication in John and Julie's ministry, a great multiplication in souls being saved, in, in bodies being restored, in people being set free. Amen. These are wonderful, wonderful things to treasure in our hearts heart. So I just wanted this evening to give you an opportunity to respond to what you've already seen happen and to, to give with faith, give in faith that God is going to do more and more of these things throughout the earth. Amen. So everything this evening will go to John and Julie. You will have uh, an envelope like this. You may be sitting on it. It may be under your seat. I don't know, but you can find an envelope like this online. I believe there will be a link so that you can give online. I would encourage you to get involved in that way as well. We can take cash, credit cards, checks. Yeah, please make your checks payable to Coastlands Church. But as I said, it will all go to John and to Julie. Amen. So let's just, I'm going to pray. Let's prepare our hearts. Ask the Holy Spirit what he wants us to do. How, how he wants us to, to, to respond to Jesus. We just open our hearts to you. Show us. Show us tonight what you want us to do. How you want us to respond to the things that we've seen in our very midst in this place. So Jesus. I pray that faith will arise. I pray that expectation will arise. Father, I pray for generosity to come into hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pass the baskets. Thank you, Graham. Just while that's taking place, I'll just quickly run through some of our resources we have outside the door. If you'd like to um, equip yourself with things to encourage your faith to believe for miracles or to be used more powerfully or have more confidence in praying for others if you're a believer. If you'd like to know how John came to discover you had this uh, healing gift on his life, his autobiography, Miracles from the Dust, is available. It's about his salvation and then how he became a missionary pastor amongst the Aboriginal communities in the remote areas of the Northern Territory of Australia. And it was amongst those tribal people that the healing gift became apparent uh, and many uh, tribal people were being healed. 
News of the miracles got overseas. In the year 2000, he was invited over to Europe and a revival broke out in uh, a small town outside Glasgow um, in the year 2000. And really, John's international ministry started in the year 2000 and hasn't stopped since. So this book is full of photos and testimonies of people healed uh, in the early days of John's ministry. It's a great faith-building book um, full of testimonies to encourage your, uh, your faith, but also just to see how God took John on the journey to discover that he healing is for today uh, and that there was a healing gift on his life. We also have um, t- time to time, but we present healing seminars and teaching to equip others to be more confident in praying for the sick in Jesus' name. John's book, Keys to Healing, is his teaching about what the Bible says about how to receive healing, how to deal with things that can hinder God's power touching us, and how to effectively pray for people in Jesus' name. Uh, and John shares lots of insights that God's shown him in his um what, 24, 25 years of um, uh, ministry um, in healing. John's third book is called Releasing Healing. This is about the importance of dealing with bitterness or unforgiveness. And this is one of the most common hindrances we see in the prayer queue if people aren't getting a change or breakthrough in their condition, if they're holding any bitterness or unforgiveness towards others, towards themselves, or if they blame God for things. That needs to be dealt with. Um, the Bible is very clear. When we stand praying for anything, if we hold anything against anyone, you need to give forgiveness them so that God can forgive and release you. So this book um, teaches, John shares testimonies of people he has had to forgive through his walk. There's a great chapter that addresses a lot of misconceptions people often have about why they think they can't forgive. It doesn't mean you have to form a relationship with people who've hurt you. It doesn't mean you're condoning um, anything or accepting anything, uh, any abuse that's happened to you in the past if you choose to forgive. It just is a decision to obey God's command that we forgive that you hand your past over to him. It opens the way for God's grace to come and take the pain and sting out of the worst memories and emotions, which is probably what sometimes people get confused with because if they've got still hurt memories and emotions, they think they haven't forgiven, but the two are separate. So that brings a lot of clarity. Um, and also there's led prayers in there to help people through that process, which isn't always easy because some people have had terrible abuses and traumas. Um, John's fourth book is called Be Anxious for Nothing, A Journey of Healing, um, uh, Depression, Fear and Addiction. This is John's testimony of being healed of these things. It starts by John talking about uh, his generational line or the generational curse of mental illness and alcoholism that came down John's family many, many generations that came down to John as a child and a young man. But when he became a Christian, he started to learn and apply Christian principles for healing. And he was set free from this heavy depression that he'd had even as a young child. He was a suicidal child. He had many fears and anxieties. And he also became a teenage alcoholic. But he was eventually set free from each of these things, each in a different way. And the second half of the book teaches the principles he um, applied to his life, the prayers he prayed, the scriptures he declared, Um, the choosing to worship, many other uh, uh, principles of God he applied to his life that brought him that freedom. And I can testify he's totally healed. And sometimes I think God's done too good a job on him because he's almost too happy for his own good and carefree. Um, but anyway, that he's it's a powerful witness. You know, It's like light and, night and day, how he is now. Uh, he used to be fearful of flying, for example. Now he loves flying. Um, I've written my own testimony. My book's called Searching for Healing from the New Age to Jesus. My testimony is that I grew up um, you know, in a stable family, so a different sort of background to John's but I grew up a really hard atheist never thought I would believe in God but I went through a series of traumas in my life where I thought my life was ruined beyond repair and I chose to give God one month's trial to show me if he was real in that month though I looked in the wrong places for healing because no one ever witnessed to me about Jesus healing or the church praying so I didn't know that was an option so I looked through things of the new age and the things I was looking at I wouldn't have even considered they were of the new age there are so many subtle things out there that people will often try for relaxation and they seem like herbal things or exercises or relaxation techniques or breathing um, um, techniques or um, other things that might look like Christian healing but they're not in Jesus name or touch therapy many other things out there that people in desperation will try because they promise healing Um, but many of these things it's not clear on the surface that they often have a link or come from false religions that therefore call on energies or false gods or uh, therefore they're demonic things Um, and 
uh, making situ their situation worse. Um, I didn't get any healing through the things I tried. I got worse and I also lost thousands of dollars. Um, and these are common things that people often will involve themselves in without realising there's a spiritual danger are things like yoga and acupuncture and Reiki healing, um, things to do with crystals and aspects of mindfulness that come from Buddhism and Hinduism. Um, many common things that seem harmless but open a door potentially to demonic things um, and take you deeper to a, a depression or an illness or open doors to other things to come on you. So I talk about those things I tried and many things that people in desperation will often turn to. Um, and there's you know, a prayer in there. If you have tried these things, it's just a question of recognising it and repenting and renouncing it to shut that door and that legal right uh, of um, the devil to send any spirit he might choose um, into your life. I also wrote a new book um, during COVID called Prepare to be Healed. Um, this is a self-deliverance and self-prayer book. Um, and you need to realise if you're a Christian, you've got the same Holy Spirit in you that every other believer that we have. Your prayers count and can shift things and bring healing and, and miracles. Um, and you, you can deliver yourself as well. And often it's just from knowing what to repent and renounce. In this book, I share now, you know, many years been um, ministering with John, often counselling people to try and find what the hindrance is um, that they're, where they're not getting the breakthrough. And also in taking many testimonies, I learn um, many subtle things that people have had a revelation of that is the thing that shifted and made a way for their miracle to break through. I've purposely written it in a very um, brief, abbreviated forms for people who need to get this information quickly. Um, so I've got a short teaching of this principle of God and, and why it's something God would have you to have you deal with and then a corresponding prayer to renounce that thing and break it off. And also we've had powerful testimonies of people to deliver just in reading these prayers. Um, and so that's, you know, meant to be a really fast help uh, and just really checking that you've covered all bases and uh, dealt with a whole lot of obvious things like bitterness and unforgiveness, but more subtle things to do with, you know, relationships and more subtle sins or things you might have involved yourself with in the past that you haven't realised would be potentially an open door to illness. I've also written a healing prayer booklet called Healing Prayers and Declarations. The first half is full of healing scripture phrased in a way that you can claim and declare healing over your life. John was set free from depression by claiming who he was in Christ. I was also set free from anxiety and panic attacks that came over me when I went through my crisis just by standing on the promises of God and declaring them over my life every day. And the second half of this book is full of all sorts of prayers to repent of sins, to break generational curses, to pray for inner healing, for your families, for favour at work, for finances, relationships, sleep, every area of life, um, for people who are just struggling in their mind are focused or who don't know the range of things you could be praying for and the words to pray. So that's a, a powerful little one too. They're available today. They're also available through our website, which is johnmeller.org. And through our website, you'll find links to all of the main forms of social media, um, where every day we share a testimony or an encouragement or a prayer for something. Um, and many of you are here because you've seen our YouTube clips, our Facebook uh, testimonies, and it's given you hope Jesus can heal you. And many people are healed and saved that way. So they're a powerful witness that Jesus still heals today. But if anyone was prayed for and healed at the start and has a reason not to want to share, uh, please let me know because we do respect people's privacy. Um, and just very briefly, John wants me to share about keeping healing. This is also on our website. It's also in John's uh, book about uh, keys to healing. Many of you are yet to be prayed for tonight uh, and are going to be healed or the healing will commence tonight. And as you go from this hour and the days and weeks to come, the healing will complete itself. So the best attitude to have once you've received prayer is just one of gratitude. Thank Jesus for 100% healing, just to keep that healing anointing flowing. Before you go to bed, say thank you, Jesus, for 100% healing of this. Just leave it with him. And many people wake up in the morning um, and, and things have shifted. Um, once the symptoms have left you, understand it's yours to keep. But the Bible tells us that we've got an enemy in Satan. He can try to rob and steal from us. Sometimes he tests people out in their healing to um, take advantage of them, to that they weren't healed or the healing didn't last or they've done something like pick something heavy up to bring that pain back. Watch out for these tricks of the enemy. So if you're healed and the symptoms disappear, whether it's right now or in the days and weeks to come, understand that if any symptom comes back to you, 
um, that it could be the devil just testing you. So what you do is you've got the authority if you're a Christian in, to pray in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit's with you. So you rebuke that pain. So I refuse to accept this pain back. Jesus' name, I'm healed. Devil, get your hands off me. Speak to it forcefully because you're rebuking a spiritual thing that's uh, often trying to rob from you. So you need to rise up and not be um, sweet, polite English people and rebuke that thing uh, and tell it where to go. Talk to it as if it's trying to steal your wallet. And it might test you a few times until it realises you know your authority in Christ. John, we're going to open up the prayer queue now. Yeah, we're going to pray for everybody. And um, I believe God. And like I said... I want to encourage you to continue to, continue to believe God. Like Julia said, walk in your healing. When you receive prayer, keep thanking you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for touching me. I receive it right now. So I want you to, you want to do that, Drew? You want to call them up? Yeah. Maybe the guy in the wheelchair can be the first one up at the back, being the guy in the wheelchair at the back too, or the front. Great. Just want to give you uh, an idea of how, exactly how this is going to work. The two front rows of chairs are now going to be moved out the way as I speak. Um, there'll be a couple of people that will stand here uh, and let people through into a line that will be formed at the front. Uh, we're only doing this not to keep you back from prayer, but just so it doesn't get too chaotic down the front here. So please be patient. Uh, there's one lady here and there's another one and there she is on her way right now. Uh, so please uh, just come up, um, try and be a little bit patient um, with particularly these ladies that are up the front here. Um, there'll be another lady here, Louise, wherever she is, there she is. She'll set a line here and she'll invite you just to step into a place where we can, uh, where, where you rather can receive your healing. Good. Listen, all of these meetings here today are set so that you would receive your healing. Good, 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 good. Okay, let's, uh, if you'd like to come forward well, now. We're going to close the um, online meeting now. We've had a phenomenal day. Um, every healing and salvation is a miracle, but there's some standout ones. This morning we had a lady that was delivered from generational curses. This evening we had a guy who'd been suffering with arthritis and he threw his sticks away. How amazing is that? How amazing is our God? So if you want to have a look at testimonies of um, the miracles that John and Julie witnessed, you can visit their website. You'll get a link there to all their social medias where they post testimonies each day. That's www.johnmeller.com. Org. And remember, this church, we are coastlands where miracles happen. They really do. We have witnessed miracles today and we will continue to do so. So we really look forward to you joining us again. If you're in Worthing, south coast of England, we would love to meet you. Come and see us. If not, we're going to be online again Tuesday evening, Tuesday morning for a prayer and devotional, Tuesday evening for another healing meeting. Have a great, great rest of your day and we'll see you again.